Are you curious about how, learning how to start your, doing your own models from scratch and not having to find models online? Well, join me today as I show you how I made the base for this project for my wife for Valentine's Day. See you guys inside. Hello and welcome to today's video. Today, as I said, we are going to make the base of this project. Now, I've already made it, of course, but basically I have this wonderful glass dome, a resin printed rose for my wife. My wife really loves Beauty and the Beast. And one of the things I wanted to give her was the rose that you see in the movie. So I resin printed a rose, which unfortunately I don't have a time lapse. And I bought the glass, but I didn't have a base that would fit. Now, I could have gone and made it out of wood or something like that, but that's not the point of this channel, right? The point of the channel is 3D printing. So we're going to hop over to Tinkercad today, and we're going to fabricate that base and print it. So that way, we have our own custom-made base. Now, if you are curious, um, I will show a time-lapse of the base printing at the end. I used Inland Rainbow PLA+. Plus, So it gave it a really different color look um, as it goes through. Because it's rainbow, it changes the colors as the filaments pull through, which gives this awesome kind of color. So basically, we're going to jump over. We're going to do Tinkercad. We're going to take it into Kira, and we're going to print the base. So if you're curious about the rose, um, let me know. I can also put the file in the comments down below um, if you guys are curious on how I made the rose because it's actually three different files um, that I found out, out there and then printed it as well. But the base is completely mine for two reasons. This base is special. Now, I did do a, cust a few test bases before I printed this one, but the key point is I prefabricated with the hole in there to fit the rose stem. I fabricated the proper size for the glass to sit on over top and also for it to get the proper color disc. Enough PLA for it to show the color change. So we're going to hop over to Tinkercad. Now Tinkercad is an awesome service. It's free, which is awesome. If you're wanting to begin learning how to do prints on your own and make your own files to print, Tinkercad's a good place to start. No expense required, no cost required, just some time on the computer. It's a free account. Um, link down in the description on how to get to Tinkercad to get signed up and start your own. You can sign up with a Google account or anything like that to get yourself started. But it's a really cool freeware program. Now some other programs that you can use, um, Fusion 360. You can get a free account but it doesn't have all the bells and whistles and it's for personal use only. So I would not recommend trying to make models and sell them because that's a breach of the license. So. Just keep that in mind as you're going through it. And there's tons of other freeware programs out there. Um, Sketchfab and different things that you can do to make 3D models as well. Tinkercad is just a very simple, small, easy to learn. It even has tutorials in it to teach you, woo, to, to walk you through how to use the program. And what we're going to do is a very simple um, two-cylinder project. But... We're going to talk about some of the settings in there as well. So this is going to be a basic overview on finding shapes, getting started, and getting you into printing your own stuff. And basically, I'm just giving you a foundation. You can build and expand on it. And if you guys do enjoy the video, let me know that you want to know more down in the comments. And make sure you hit the like button on this video. But most of all, if you enjoy the content on this channel, hit that subscribe button. Let me know I'm doing stuff that you want to do. And, you know, this whole channel is out there to help people get 3D printing and keep going. So, for the most important part of this video, let's hop over to the computer. See you guys over there. All right, guys, here we are at Tinkercad.com. So, I'm already signed into my account. Just go to Tinkercad.com and make your own account, and you'll get logged in, and you'll see a similar dashboard to this. Now, quick navigation of the dashboard. There's gallery, blog, learn is really cool because you've got all kinds of learning steps and lessons and projects that are all here for you to do as you want to within Tinkercad. So I'm going to go back to my dashboard and you can see here's the project we're actually going to do. So I'll open it up and basically doesn't look like much and it's not a very hard project so we're going to kind of go to town on it. So let's hop back to the dashboard 
and we're going to create a new design. Now, I do recommend if you've never used this program, go do those lessons, follow the training. So here's our work plane. My project, I said, is actually three cylinders that I'm going to do today. Very simple, very basic project, but some explanation is required. So here's the work plate. No particular size done here. So this is a hollow box. This will make a box hole. Same with the cylinder. These are solid objects. You can do text. You can do all kinds of stuff just right here, basic for you to do. But we're doing cylinders. So I'm going to pull a cylinder on here. I'm going to resize this guy. Now, as you can see, there's, there's measurements. I need to go to, I'm going to go to about 55, 55. There we go. So there's the initial cylinder, but it's too high. So I'm going to shrink it down to about right there. Now, I'm going to zoom in a little bit. That is a solid cylinder. Now, for what we're doing, I need a second cylinder on top. And I need to size him to 36, 36. Actually, it's 37, 37 um, for this project. So, you can see it takes a little getting used to. There we go. Then I'm going to move that guy over to center as best I can. And he's too tall for our project, so I'm going to shrink him too and make him into basically a seam. Now you're noticing too, they're, it's very squarish. We're gonna fix that here in a little bit. So basically, here's the base of our project. This is big enough that it, the glass will slip over it, and this gives it its nice lip. But I need to make the hole for the rose. That's where the hollow one comes in. So I'm gonna bring this guy right in the middle. Then I'm gonna shrink him down to itty bitty living space. I think it was two, two. Now I'm gonna drag him back over where I need him, kind of close to center. Then I'm gonna sink him in, just like that. So that's creating the hole for the rose to go into in the project. So, awesome, we've got it looking great. But I'm gonna grab this outer ring and I'm gonna move segments over. And also gonna move sides. Notice, got a lot smoother when I did that. And then I kind of like the beveled look, so it gives it a rise on bottom and upper. So I kind of like just messing with this, kind of seeing what fits best. And I do like the bevel. Then sides, that gives it more smoothness to the model. So this is similar, my bigger disc is a bit big, but you know what, hey, these are however you want to make it. Now, if I wanted to, for example, grab text, I can pull text in here. Like that. And I want it to be tall. I want to lift it up. I want it to be not so terribly long. And just go up here and go, hello, or actually, bell. Then what you can do is resize this, for example, like that, and pull it into your project. And look at there. It's sticking out of the bevel of your model if you wanted to. Or you could do a rose, or for example, Valentine's Day is this coming weekend. You could do love or different things like that to make the project more your own. So this is just a really good starting place to get started. And you have tools like rulers. This is just basic shapes. There's all kinds of stuff in here. There's a shape library, all kinds of stuff, connectors, characters, all kinds of things you can pull in here to make a pretty cool project. But essentially, this is what we were after today, was just to make the base for the rows. So it's a simple project, simple way to get started, really great simple tool, very basic, there's a lot you can learn here. And what you would do at this point is, if you're happy with your project, you'll go up here to export. You'll export it as an STL. And there we go. And I'm gonna open that STL up into Kira. Once Kira opens up here, if you guys are enjoying this content and you wanna see more Tinkertad, Tinkercad, <laughs> 
Let me know in the comments down below if you want me to do more videos getting even more in-depth detail into Tinkercad. Because this is, like I said, this is an awesome program to make simple, basic, and honestly, more than basic, different things that you can do. It's a little bit more explanation too. Snap grid, you know, those are general sizes and stuff like that that work out well to help you out get your project going. Now, there's a reason why I port, export it in STL. I'm going to be putting this in the Cura so I can slice it into the G-code file for my printer to read. Now, my final product won't have Bell. It'll be like the one that you saw earlier, but there it is. Pulled in there. Bell is on there. And it looks pretty darn nice, if you ask me. It's a very simple little project. It's got a nice bevel. Let's slice it real quick and see what we've got. Um, when I printed this, I used a... Uh, I printed this on a CR10 V2. I used Rainbow Inland PLA Plus because um, I wanted the color differential. And I actually printed it twice. I'm going to show you guys two prints that I did. Um, they're both pretty much the same. The colors are a bit different, except... The second one was the final project, and it had a smaller hole in the middle. Um, my original one, it was too big, which, you know, that's all trial and error as best as you can do. But we hop this over to preview. Now you can see how it's going to print. And you can see the bell protruding out of the top, just like that, just like we created it. And if you slice it down, I don't have the infill in very high, but it builds it up. There's our center hole cylinder hole that we created. I did push it all the way through. You don't have to. Um, final product, I didn't, but this one I did for learning purposes. There is a raft. That's the blue because um, there is going to be support because I did a bevel and there is going to be a little bit of support given to here to help build it up. So basically all we got to do now is head over to the printer and get this guy printed out. Um, again, the ones you'll see will not have that bell. That was just for education purposes here of Tinkercad. So again, let's hop over to the printer and we'll see you guys on the other side. Thanks for joining me. All right, guys, and that's all there was to it. Um, a lot of trial and error, a lot of playing around with numbers, converting everything into metric uh, to get this done, making sure we figured out the internal diameter of this was key so that we could get a proper fit. Now, mine is not snug, snug. It does have a little give, but you want a little bit of give. You want to have some flex. You're working with glass. Um, if you're curious about the glass dome, I bought that on Amazon. Link down in the description below if you're curious about doing that as well. But this was kind of a neat little project I wanted to do for Megan. So thank you guys. I hope you enjoyed the video. Hit that subscribe button if you're new here. And we will see you in the next episode.